Assalamu alaikum. Hello, kids. Insha'Allah, today I am going to tell you about one of the most important prophets mentioned in the Holy Quran. It is the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. In Islam, Prophet Musa is loved and respected. He was both a prophet and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God mentions his name more than 120 times in the Quran. It is the longest and most detailed story of a prophet in the Holy Quran. Are you ready to hear his story? Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The birth of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The descendants of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, who are also known as Bani Israel, migrated to Egypt. They lived for a long time happily in this country. Prophet Musa alayhi salam was born to one of the descendants of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam. He was born in Egypt. The ruler of Egypt was the Pharaoh and he hated the Israelites very much. One day, he sent an order to kill all baby boys born in Israelite families. The soldiers killed all the newborn boys in Egypt, and they soon arrived at the house of Musa salam. But Musa's mother escaped from the house unnoticed. She placed her baby in a wooden chest in the great Nile River. Musa alayhi salam floated in the current for a long time. And all this time, the Prophet's elder sister ran along the shores of the river following the wooden chest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the chest down the Nile River and soon it floated into a small stream. The Pharaoh's wife spotted the chest and ordered her servants to bring it ashore. When Pharaoh's wife, who was taking a bath in the stream, saw the baby, she fell in love with him. She picked up the baby and showed him to the Pharaoh. Look, she said, here is a joy for the eye to behold. Please don't kill him. Let us adopt him as our son. The Pharaoh agreed with her, and they decided to adopt the baby. It was in this way that God made the Prophet grow up in the royal court of Egypt. By the evening, Pharaoh's wife was really upset. Why does this baby eat? She asked her servants. We need someone to nurse him quickly, otherwise he is going to die. The Prophet's sister, who had been following him all this while, overheard this. She came forward and spoke up. I know a woman who can nourish the baby with good care. Pharaoh's wife was surprised to see her, but she had become very desperate by now. She agreed to her suggestion and asked her to bring the woman. In the meantime, the Prophet's mother was weeping bitterly at the thought of her little boy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how much a mother loves her child. It was then that her daughter came running to her, bearing the great news. She told her that the Prophet was adopted by the royal family and that they were looking for a nurse. She immediately left with her daughter to feed her little boy. When Pharaoh's wife saw the little boy being fed by the nurse, she was pleasantly surprised. The boy had not taken any food all day, and she was getting concerned. Little did she know that the nurse was actually his mother. It was in this way that Allah made the mother happy again. 
the prophet grew up in the palace, and was taught along with Pharaoh's son. He grew to become big and strong, but he was very kind and gentle to everyone. The people of Egypt loved him very much. One day, he saw a soldier beating an Israelite. The poor man kept begging everyone for help, but no one interfered. When he saw the prophet, the poor man pleaded to help him. The prophet was very angry when he saw this. He stepped forward and hit the soldier with such a powerful blow that he collapsed and died. When his anger subsided, he realized what a grave sin he had committed. The prophet knew it was a sin to kill anyone until he is brought to trial and found guilty. He knelt on the ground and prayed to Allah, "O、oh、my Lord, I have indeed wronged my soul. Do you forgive me?" The prophet then vowed, "Never help those that sin." And to be in Allah's service for the rest of his life. The next day, the prophet was still shaken from what had happened the day before. It was then that he saw the same poor man he had helped getting beaten by another soldier. The prophet decided to help him again, but then the soldier said something that made him stop abruptly. He said, "O、oh、Musa." Are you going to kill me the same way you killed that man yesterday? Before the prophet could utter a word, one of his friends came running to him. Musa, the Egyptian chiefs know what you did. They are coming to arrest you. Get away while you still can. The prophet then asked Allah to save him from these sinful people. He then left the city. To the land of Median. Little did he know that he was about to encounter many adventures in his life, devoted to the service of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He walked through the deserts for many days to reach Median. It was then that he stumbled upon a small oasis, which had several trees and a water hole. The sun was blazing hot. So he decided to get some rest. He saw some men who were letting their animals drink water from the water hole. Behind them were two young women with a tiny flock of sheep, waiting for their turn. After some time, he called out to the women, "What's wrong? Why don't you let your sheep drink water?" The women told him that they couldn't because the men won't let them till they finish. When the prophet heard this, he got up and steered their sheep toward the water, letting them drink. The men grumbled at first, but when they saw how big and strong the prophet was, they stopped their grumbling and stayed back. The two women were grateful for the prophet's help. He went back and sat under the cool shade of a tree, and the women took their flock of sheep back home. After some time, one of the women returned and asked him to come meet their father. The prophet agreed and went with her. He reached their house and introduced himself to their father. The prophet told the old man his story. The father found the prophet to be a very good man, so he offered one of his daughters to him in marriage. He had become old. And needed a young man to help with the care of animals. The prophet agreed, and he got married to one of his daughters. It was a happy marriage, and he took care of the animals. Did you enjoy the video, kids? Inshallah, in the next episode, I will tell you the story of how the prophet returned to Egypt and saved the Israelites. If you liked the video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and the notification icon to keep updated on all our videos. Don't forget to share the video with your friends as well. That's all for today. Goodbye.